my people of St. Martin, today I stand before you to address an issue that is gravely affecting our neighborhoods, our tourism, and our country as a whole. The rise in gun violence is not just a statistic, it is a tragic reality that has been shattering families, tearing apart our communities, and instilling a sense of fear in our daily lives. As your Prime Minister, I remain deeply committed to ensuring the safety and security of every citizen in this country. We cannot allow this tide of violence to continue unchecked. We must act. We must act now despite any political rhetoric. Our government has already implemented a series of measures aimed at curbing this menace. As you are aware, we are busy strengthening our police force and providing them with better resources. However, we also need to discuss and immediately explore introducing stricter penalties for those found guilty of gun-related crimes. But legislation alone is not enough. We need the collective will and effort of every citizen to reclaim our streets, our unshakable sense of security. As we approach the upcoming parliamentary election, it is crucial for us to reaffirm our stance on public safety. This election is not just about choosing representatives. It's about choosing the future we want for our children, our families and our country. We must elect leaders who are committed to fighting the scourge of violence and who will work tirelessly to implement policies that protect us all. Simply said, putting our people over politics. To those who believe that guns are a solution to their problems, I urge you to consider. Guns do not provide safety. They only bring more violence and sorrow. The true strength of our nation lies in our unity, our ability to come together as one people and to support each other through difficult times. Let us choose dialogue over discord, compassion over conflict and unity over division. To the residents of our great country, I call upon you to be vigilant and proactive, report suspicious activities, support community programs, especially for our young people, and engage in constructive dialogue with neighbors and support our justice departments. We all have a role to play in ensuring our collective safety. Let us cease to use of guns. Let us lay down our arms and pick up the tools for peace. Our children must be able to continue playing freely in the streets, continue being a country where families can thrive without fear and where every citizen can live in peace and prosperity. Together, we can overcome this challenge. Together, we can create a safer, stronger and more united nation. Thank you, and may we all strive for a future where gun violence is a distant memory replaced by harmony and hope. May God bless you, and may God bless this great country, St. Martin. Thank you. The side of education, I must say, um, the one percent vacation pay for subsidized schools were signed by my person. So just like all the other public schools who receive their 1% vacation pay, all subsidized schools, in short, will be getting their 1% vacation payout. From the Department of Youth, I can say I 17 BOP certifications. The Department of Education is in recognition, validation of NEPA's S level program three, L4, sports, physical activities, and recreation, the SPA. Establishment of school vacation schedules for 2025 and 2028, and amended 2024, 2025 school vacation schedule. 
I seen the assignment of the work at the Raul Illich, also sports complex, and the in, La, in the Islands Hoops Basketball 3x3 tournament were also signed off by my person. I must say we had more than 100 summer school students, which I also signed off their contracts, so they can also be compensated for the great job well done during this summer vacation. Uh, are you saying all the LBAs that were issued prior to you taking office now have to be corrected because of deliberate mistakes? Is that what you said? I would not say if it's deliberately done. Mm -hmm. I can insinuate mm -hmm. it is deliberately done. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason with the type of information that the former minister is going out with, mm -hmm. um, it really is it's sad that you're trying to basically gain political um, traction on this minister. It doesn't work because I do not react. And second of all, we deal with facts and circumstances. Mm -hmm. In saying so, I will also elaborate further on the decision that was taken by the Acting Minister of Justice on my part. Let's go back into history where everything was drafted by the former Minister of Justice. Even the Council of Ministers also agreed to rectify my payment based on a court verdict. Even though El Bay was sent forward to the governor and also returned, the former Minister of Justice herself also got her colleagues drafted the MB. This was not done by this administration. The continuity has to continue. Because of personal issues and not issues of the country, my stuff was shoved in a drawer. There are also many other MBs because the governor at the time was not signing El Bay's that were also signed by the former Minister of Justice. And I have all those evidence as such, and therefore it can be proven that my stuff was shoved aside because I'm part of the political arena, and therefore you have an issue that I have taken many situations to court on the behalf of justice workers to rectify their salaries, and the former minister took it personal, so therefore I couldn't get my stuff fixed, but everyone that I worked for and got their stuff won in court, Theirs were fixed. Can you give us an update on the status of the Dr. Martin Luther King um, Junior Primary School? Is it going to be open in time for the new school well, year? And I do also have a clarification, Minister. Okay. You indicated that the entertainer possibly came in as a tourist and as such an investigation is being done. And my question would be, if it does turn out that he came in as a tourist and no economic license, I believe that's what you mentioned, were yes. given so the taxes could be paid. What repercussions would there be for the promoter who allowed this person? Mention quickly the first question that you, that you mentioned. Just, just begin it, short. The Dr. Martin Luther King The Dr. Martin, Martin Luther School. King project is being worked on as we speak, and hopefully we will have it open by, um, in the next few weeks. For the, for the reopening of school? Yes, for the reopening of school, we are pushing that agenda in order for us to have it open. And if there's any, if there's any um, technical difficulties, if it's going to be open a little later, the public will be informed. And the repercussions for? And the repercussions basically, because at the end of the day, I do have a close relationship with the Council of Ministers, especially the one that's gonna act on my behalf, where we spoke on the matter that they didn't, act, they didn't, re they didn't get any permit from me, Second of all, we need to check, I think I do not rec recall the name of the bar um, where it happened, but we need to check the moon bar. We need to check their, their permit to see basically what it held in, basically what is allowed and what is not allowed. And basically when I spoke to the chief of police as well, where they had discussions with them, certain information was hidden from the police, hence the reason why we did not know. That is the answer that I got from the chief of police. SHV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SHV is cardless. 
Request your MySV account today and enter the virtual office of SV. Go to SV.SX and sign up now. SV, yeah. your social health insurance. your plan of approach to tackle overdevelopment on the island. This is something your party have been criticizing for quite a while. And can you give us an update on shelters on St. Martin? Uh, you spoke about the trenches in your statement moments ago. Uh, I'd like to know, you said the contracts have not been finalized. Who exactly are cleaning these trenches? Indeed, it is something that beyond party, I as a minister, and I think... Um, Numerous governments have spoken about sustainable development. Um, the question is then how do you actually not only speak about it, how do you actually make it something that you do in practice? So one of the things that we have done since coming into office is a thorough review of existing um, uh, building permits issued, as well as how we go forward with issuing building permits. Um, the is a, a large number of uh, complaints received, particularly in, a, in the area of Simpson Bay, regarding some of the new developments that have come on board. We are now actually busy reviewing the billing permits for two of those developments. We are calling in one of developers um, next week because there's an issue around, as you may know, a um, number of these developments are actually on single unit residential lots, whereas some of them actually have, um, have been given a permit for more stories than is allowed in certain areas. In some instances, um, we are having a discussion about how we can review those, um, and in some instances, we're gonna have a discussion about how to move forward, uh, i.e. the revoking of a bill. On a more larger scale, what we're actually doing is supporting the ministry uh, policy. Currently, we have a zoning policy. One of the things that we're pushing to try and achieve within the medium term is to have a zoning ordinance. Why is that? Because with every different minister of Romi, everyone has a different idea of what development means. Uh, for me, I've stressed very much um, since taking office that development is not only about physical infrastructure, it's also about people as well as how you support development in infrastructure. Um, the zoning ordinance we are finalizing um, the different zoning plans that are currently in uh, present. There's 13. The idea is to merge those into one, and, one or two. And from that, we'll take that to Parliament um, to basically be able to regulate more long term how we develop outside of sort of individual ministers having a decision on what St. Martin should look like. Uh, indeed, since 2022, no structured contract has been put in place. What that means is, is that whenever a trenching initiative or cleanup is scheduled. We have to ad hocly as a ministry call on contractors and of course ad hoc work costs much more money. So the ministry actually has been paying a lot more money for ad hoc cleaning. It also means that cleaning is not done regularly. So what we see now is that unless someone from the ministry itself triggers a request to clean, um, trenches are not cleaned uh, regularly. So in that sense, uh, the, the trenching has been happening since the past two years, but not regularly and not structurally. So in some areas, for example, Corrita Trench, we see very good evidence of this, where there's two almond trees growing. As you know, almond tree takes quite a while to grow. There's also structural decay of that trench itself, and we're actually looking towards how we can move towards harvesting the whole entire trench, as was done by the baseball field on Gladiola Drive. Um, I wanted to ask this to the, the minister that was there previous, but he had to leave. A call has been made for GEBE to wipe out all previous bills and start new from October. Now, we all know that GEBE um, 
has a lot of financial obligations at the moment as a result of the financial crisis. We have the containerized generators that we're renting, then we have other generators that we're purchasing, and then we have the big engines. Now, is a call like this, is something like this realistically, financially feasible for GEB to do, given all of the financial obligations that it has currently and upcoming? I mean, some are saying that this is an election promise that is not feasible. I just wanted to know as the a member of the Council of Ministers, if you think this is something that feasible that GEB can realistically embark on. And um, just another quick one, I'd like a status of the hurricane maximum price list. You said two weeks ago that it would be going into effect in the coming days. So coming days has come and passed. And I'd also like an update on the assessment of the inquiry into taxi and bus permits. That's a full, that's a that's a loaded question because I, I would think GEB would have to do a full assessment financially to see if it can meet their their its demands for the millions that they have to still pay towards these generators and still see if um, if they can cut down on the income. You 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 notice GEB recently has been le literally pleading and they're doing a lot of promotion asking people to pay. To, to pay to pay their their bills, so I I cannot answer that for GB. I don't have insight on the financial financials for GB. But outside looking in, I think knowing that what they have to what they have for future that they have to pay, I think it's a very hard thing for them to do. My personal opinion, but I can't say and I can't speak on behalf of GB. Just just my personal opinion. And then the third the question, hurricane maximum price list. According to me, it was already in listed in the uh, Gazette. Okay. I would have to confirm that, but according to me, it was already listed in the Gazette. And the last one is the bus. And taxi permits the assessment. That's exactly what BB re requested. Oh, Those okay. are, I'm still waiting on SOA Bay and the Integrity Chamber on their feedback on that as well. Okay. I've noticed that I've done a little bit of research. Airfares to St. Martin right now are very high. Load factors are full, uh, meaning the planes are, are very full. Um, I noticed that Avalo is flying now. It's a low-cost carrier. Mm. They're flying from Hartford to Jamaica, and they've announced that they're in an expansion mode. They're a low-cost carrier. But the interesting thing is they're flying a lot out of the Northeast. Have you um, looked into approaching um, low-cost carriers to help alleviate prices and load factors? Um, prior to your... Um, swearing in as minister, we attended a presentation by the tourist office at Pelican where all of the different firms came to the island to make presentations. And in those presentations, all of them had a social media component to their contracts. So are they up to date with their payments and shouldn't they have the responsibility of monitoring these various message boards and various um, groups on social media? You indicated, um, sort of uh, gestured, that the fuel clause is actually something that would fall under TIAT. Um, is that correct? And would TIAT be willing to give a very clear breakdown in terms of how the fuel clause is actually made up? And an update on the Tourism Authority, please. Avalo. Thank you for that research. That's something I would have to look into myself, you know, given the situation where we are right now with elections and everything. But that's most important for us is uh, finding ways to decrease um, the, the rates for, that's a priority for this cabinet, for, for our team. And um, I'll look into that suggestion by you from Avalo and see if we can even have some discussions with them in the near future. As for the firms, Last week, in addition to meeting with Royal Group, I also met with Big Ideas and Diamond, the main firms, and they are off, but just one payment, so I'm following up with that as well. But I'm also um, looking into re, because of what I've met there, we have so many different, um, so many different PR, for, PR, PR teams, and I think Big Ideas is the only ones actually that's managing our social media. They have to come to Big Ideas to, for them to do the, the updates. But I'm busy looking at the methodology that, that is currently there and seeing how that maybe I can restructure it. Maybe I just mentioned earlier in my statement that I want to boost some more um, in, in social media. I feel like that, that the, the fund allocation is very low, so I may want to increase there more. So I'm busy re reviewing everything. And with that, I can I would, once I have a 
clear picture of where I want to see from a marketing perspective, I will then um, come back to you with that. But it has my attention. As for the fuel class, that's a question that I asked personally as a member of parliament a uh, few, maybe last year. I have that information. I can find that information for you because I don't know it by heart, but I do. I should have the breakdown of the fuel clause, and I'll be sending that to you as well. Okay. Any other questions? The, the, so, Clarity, um, is the social media management of St. Martin's social media part of the contracts for the Big firms? Ideas is one of them. Okay, so, That's so doing they the, are already Yes, they tasked. are the ones, yes. And then the tourism authority. And the tourism, oh, the tourism authority. The we're in the process of finalizing a agreement with a particular person, as soon I think, I don't want to mention the person's name until I know it's signed, sealed, and delivered, to um, to start the project, not the project, but the full, uh, yeah, well, the project of starting the, the SDA. I think by hopefully by the end of this week, we should have an agreement. It would have to still come to come for approval. And once it's approved, I will be announcing it publicly. But I think by mid, hopefully, I'm hoping by mid to late um, August, we can have, um, we can finally now have a foot in the door and start the process of finalizing, updating the, legis the current legislation, and finally getting the SDA on the on the ground, working. SV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SV is cardless. Request your My SV account today and enter the virtual office of SV. Go to SV.SX and sign up now. SV, yeah. your social health insurance. has arrived at the 47th regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM here in Grenada. Previously scheduled for earlier this month, it had to be postponed due to the impact of Hurricane Beryl, one of the first matters on the agenda during today's meetings. Following the first business session, Prime Minister Motley spoke to me frankly, admitting that enough is not being done, specifically by the international community. Clearly the experience of Hurricane Beryl and the arrangements institutionally that we have both regionally and internationally in order for us to be able to better prepare ourselves not only for recovery but for the building of adaptation um, and to become more resilient because I believe we have no more than a decade within which to do that. Um, and the international community has not been stepping up to the plate either on the loss and damage fund or sufficiently on some of the other issues. We've made progress, for example, with the natural disaster clauses and other things, but we need to be able to ensure that there's a greater pool of concessional funds. Another major issue on the table is that of food security, which is at risk given the increase in both droughts and storms. We're all compromised and therefore we're trying to see how best we can prepare ourselves, both in terms of looking to see what are the opportunities for parametric insurance for our farmers at a regional level um, so that when there is loss that they're capable of claiming but at the same time i think we're going to have to invest in far more climate resilient agriculture which means doing some enclosed um, agriculture not just open field 
but doing agriculture also for a percentage of what we produce within the context of, 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 of greenhouses and other more secure facilities. That's going to take more planning, more financing, but I think it's going to have to be part and parcel of the equation as we go forward. As it relates to the goal of reducing the region's food import bill by 25% by 2025, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, says given the devastation caused by Hurricane Beryl, it's simply not feasible. It, it has to move. Some countries would be still on target because they haven't been impacted yet. But this, this is always going to be a moving target. 2025 is an aspirational date, clearly. Um, some progress was being made before, and now we have had a setback. As the heads of government continue to meet tomorrow, a number of other issues, including shipping, transport, and the conflict in Haiti, will be discussed. Reporting from St. George's, Grenada, Crystal Hoyt, CBC News.